Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Travel Free. In today's video, I'm going to explain you the topic about concept learning in the subject of machine learning. So as I already said in my previous videos, the subject is a bit difficult, uh, a bit, uh, you know, difficult to understand and to explain to you people, but I still am trying my best to explain it to you in the best way. Uh, if still you are not able to understand anything or if you're having any queries, just let me know that in the comment section and I'll definitely try to improve more. And also, uh, just let me know your exam date along with your college name in the comment section so that I can make videos more quickly. According to your college syllabus, I'll have a look at your syllabus um, by entering your college name in the internet so that I can come to know about your syllabus and the date by which I need to complete the syllabus, right? So now let us get into the video. So first, what do you mean by concept learning actually? Why we have to do concept learning? Concept learning is nothing but it will help us in finding all the consistent hypothesis or the concepts. So among, uh, we'll have different hypotheses, we'll have different concepts, right? So in the, at the by, by the end of the video, you'll be uh, understanding the exact definition of this word, uh, this uh, line sentence which I have told, finding all the consistent hypothesis or the concepts right so first let us take an example we are having this is universe like it is a universe of gadgets like all the gadgets uh, tablets smartphones laptops desktops all the gadgets ipods earphones whatever it is are in this universe okay so but for time being in this video this concept we are going to learn only about the tablets the tabs and the smartphones that's all not about all the other uh, gadgets right so we are going to learn about the tablets and we are going to learn about the smartphones okay done so each and every gadget each and everything will have the its features right so those features are defined as binary valued attributes okay so we define those features in terms of binary valued attributes okay so let us define the features now so we have uh, the size so the size of tablets and also smartphones we will be seeing okay so first let us take the size of mobile the sorry the size of tablet is large and the size of smartphone is small comparatively right and the color let us define the color as blue uh, for uh, you know no no not blue let us take it as black itself black uh, for the tablet and blue for mobile phone okay and the screen type let us take as um, flat for um, tablet and for uh, smartphone let us take it as folded we have folded phones as well right so folded and shape for tablet let us take it as square we have square shape tabs also right and for mobile phone let us take it as rectangle so we have defined different features for each tablet and smartphone right so we will be uh, defining them as x1 this is x2 so this is x3 and this is x4 so these are the four different features that we have defined for both uh, you know tablets as well as smartphones okay so now how do you define the concept how do you uh, represent the concept related to this so the concept can be represented by x1 x2 x3 x4 you need to include these tags okay so you will be representing that in that way right so how do we actually uh, i mean particularly for tablet or particularly for smartphone how do we represent the features if we ask so what is the first feature so x1 x2 x3 x4 right so this is the general representation of the uh, concept so we should use this general representation and write individual representation for each of them now so for tablet x1 is large right so large comma x2 is black comma and x3 is flat and x4 is square right so this is how we are going to uh, represent the concept for tablet and for smartphone how it uh, goes it goes like small and then blue and then folded and then rectangle right so this is how we rep rep uh, represent a concept for tablet and for smartphone okay done so we have represented all the features x1 to x4 we have we have only four features right now so how many possible instances are there so how do you get number of possible instances for a particular concept that we are discussing 
we get it by 2 power d where d is the number of features here how many features we have x1 x2 x3 x4 we have total of four features right so you do 2 power 4 in order to get number of possible instances not number of concepts just instances okay right so what do you get then 2 power 4 is nothing but 16 right so these are number of instances so how do you find out the total number of possible concepts then you do it as 2 2 2 power 2 power d so what is 2 power d 16 right so 2 power 16 is the number of possible concepts which are possible for this example which we have taken okay for this example with these many features okay done so this is how you find out number of uh, you know instances and from number of instances we use the value which we got there in order to find the total number of possible concepts as well so now okay we got total number of instances we got total number of concepts then why why we are doing all these things why we are finding out all these things so from these 2 power 16 concepts which you have got you are not going to discuss about all those concepts you are not going to learn about all those concepts you are not going to teach your machine about all those concepts which you got right you will be choosing some concepts from those 2 power 16 concepts which you have received done right and which type of concepts will be choosed only concepts which are consistent all the time those type of concepts will be considered okay now let us see the video is not yet finished just wait for some more time so now if you see this is the complete space right so this is the complete you know picture or complete hypothesis or complete concept you can say so from the complete concept we are not interested in learning about all the concept right so for example in the gadgets we have taken only tabs and smartphones into consideration we did not take iPods or we did not take laptops we did not take desktops earphones headsets whatever it is all of them are also obviously gadgets but we have not considered them that is we are not interested in learning about the entire concept right we are concentrating only on some particular um, area of the concept and that is called as the target concept or the hypothesis space and whatever the conclusions we get from this we apply that to the entire system right so we are not interested in learning about the entire system we are learning only about a particular concept done so uh, now here when we are trying to learn we have different kinds of hypothesis so you'll be uh, coming to know about this uh, you know you'll understand about this more clearly when you understand about the finders algorithm so different kind of hypothesis you'll be getting uh, for example let us take in our previous example itself like not previous example in the sense the example which we have discussed in this video itself so what were the features of a tablet it was large it was black flat square right so these are the four features which we have defined for the tablet so based on these features we will be selecting whether to reject this or whether to accept this done so here um, along with the different possible hypothesis for different kinds of situations so this is according to the situation right so instead of discussing about gadgets in instead of discussing about a tablet if you are discussing about a laptop or we are discussing about something suppose we are discussing about books then we get something right uh, some different features we will be getting so but irrespective of the type of the topic or type of the thing that you are discussing about that you are learning about this two hypotheses are there which is more specific and most general which are common to all the uh, concepts or all the hypotheses which you are learning okay suppose if everything is null if all the features are represented with null the phi symbol then in that case you need to reject all these okay that means which is called as the most specific hypothesis that you that means you are going to reject any type of feature all type of features it may be a best or it may be the worst anything if it is represented with null then you are going to reject it okay so a, all are rejected and this will be called as the most specific hypothesis okay done now if everything is represented with question mark then which means anything like whatever is there you will accept it whether it is good for you or whether it is bad for you like irrespective of its um, consequence you will be accepting it whether it is good or bad and this is called as the most general hypothesis you reject everything that is called as the most specific hypothesis and you are accepting everything then that comes under the most general hypothesis okay done 
so now let us understand what is the main goal of the concept learning it will find all the concepts or hypothesis that are always consistent so that depending on them we can derive a conclusion for the final system suppose if you are selecting a concept or a hypothesis which is not consistent which keeps on always changing then the conclusion which you have derived based on that will also keep on changing right it is also not consistent so all the concepts or hypothesis which are always consistent you need to select those kind of hypothesis or concepts and that is the main goal of concept learning okay so for example now what is hypothesis and what is reality actually now if you get a doubt about that i'll tell you so suppose in 2000s uh, we have sub so again let us take this gadgets example only so we have x1 x2 x3 x4 okay uh, so for example let us take x1 will represent touch phone touch um, facility in mobile phones and x2 will represent wireless charging and x3 represents some dual sim like that x4 represents uh, some you know uh, wireless headsets or whatever it is so we have some set of things but in 2000s in the very beginning like 20 years back it, all these things were not possible right all these things were just assumptions like uh, what if we have wireless charging what if we have uh, you know wireless headset what we what if we have a touch facility in our mobile and what if we have du dual sim so everything was an imagination at that time that is everything was hypothesis at that time right now but in case of 2020s everything became possible right if not everything at least few at least three out of um, four became possible right so that is hypothesis and this is reality and which kind of things are really implemented the things which are consistent the things which are uh, you know which doesn't have any contradictions so those kind of things only will be implemented not all the features again right so this is how you define concept learning as the main task of concept learning is to find out the concepts is to find out the hypothesis or the concepts which are always consistent okay uh, so as i always say i tried my best to explain the concepts in a better way but still if you're still not able to understand at any part or if you're still having any doubts just let me know that in the comment section i'll definitely try to clear all your doubts for sure and let's meet up in the next coming video with another topic uh, till then stay tuned to my channel and as i said don't forget to mention your exam date in the comment section so that i can make videos according to that date and thanks for watching the video if you want to share this you have with this with your friends as well so that even they can understand it better you can happily share with them and thanks for watching let's meet up in the next coming video with another topic